So far we've been focusing on major concepts in C, such as memory addresses, pointers, and data types. And we haven't said much about the details of the syntax. This has been intentional. I think it's important for you to understand the concepts before you start to confuse them with the details of the syntax. Plus, once you understand the concepts, the syntax should make more sense. But still, we need to learn the syntax. So in our next program, invest.c, you'll learn a good percentage of all the C syntax that you'll ever need to know. If you understand invest.c, really understand it, and can use the syntax, you're well on your way to mastering the C syntax. So invest.c performs a very simple function. All it does is track the growth of an investment over time. And the reason it's so simple is so that you can understand what each line of code is supposed to be doing, so that will help you understand what the syntax is doing. So let's look at an example of it running. So it asks me for an initial investment, how much that investment is expected to grow each year, and the number of years that I want to track it. So let's say that I invest $100, I expect the growth rate to be 5%, and I'm going to track it for 10 years. It replies by telling me that the input that I gave to it was valid, and we'll see why 1 means valid later. And it tells me what the value of my investment is over the years. So my initial investment, year 0, $100. After year 10, I have $162. Now if I try it again and my initial investment is negative and my growth rate is 0% and I track for 10 years, it tells me my input was not valid so it's going to exit. So we're going to look at this, at this code in detail in the next videos. But before we do that, it's important to point out a couple of key features that any code should have. So first of all, it should be modular meaning that you shouldn't write one long piece of code. You should break it up into pieces, into functions that have very specific identifiable functions. They have identifiable inputs and outputs. And that way, when you're debugging your code, if you can check that each function is working properly, then the code overall should be working properly. If you find yourself writing functions that are longer than 20 lines or so, you're probably not thinking modularly. You also should limit your use of global variables because global variables go across all functions and it's harder to keep track of where you could be introducing bugs. So modularity is important in any code that you write. The second aspect is readability. You should use white spaces and carriage returns to help organize your code in an easily readable way. You should use comments so that readers of your code can understand what you're trying to do. And you should give variable names and function names that mean something so when I look at that variable I can guess what it's trying to do. I'd like to end this video by showing you a piece of code that doesn't satisfy these ideas. So this is a piece of code that was a winner in the 2012 International Obfuscated C Code Contest. And believe it or not, this code here actually performs a useful function. But the goal of this contest is try to make the code as hard to read as possible. This is not what you want to do. So here's an example of running this code. It takes the code that, or the number that I wrote out in English and turns it into a numerical value. Anyway, when you're expert enough to write code like this, then you don't need these videos anymore. <laughs>